So this is the uh, community meeting for 7th Street at Burnett storm drain uh, rehabilitation. Uh, this is a city uh, stormwater project, uh, specifically part of the storm drain rehab program. Uh, my name is Dylan Johns and I'm the assistant project manager for the city. Uh, Mike Bennett is the primary project manager and he's also on this uh, call. Um, the city's storm drain rehabilitation program is a program that was started within the last uh, five or six years to proactively maintain their uh, the city's aging storm drain infrastructure. Um, we investigate uh, areas with historical pipe failures, uh, areas with um, that are known to have older infrastructure or uh, just known to be uh, hot spots for problems. Um, the storm drain pipes are investigated using closed circuit uh, TV inspections, um, primarily utilizing uh, basically a camera mounted on a small uh, wheeled robot uh, that can drive up the pipes. Um, the videos uh, that are taken are then reviewed um, by engineers to uh, identify which pipes have significant defects, and then those pipes are prioritized um, for rehabilitation. Um, the, we try to utilize trenchless uh, pipe rehab technologies whenever possible to help minimize surface disturbance. Uh, our three most common techniques that we use are cured in place pipe, uh, which you'll also hear referred to as CIPP, uh, geopolymer pipelining, and pipe bursting. Uh, CIPP is a resin soaked canvas or felt material that's pulled into the existing pipe and inflated to the uh, inside diameter of the old pipe and then is cured using hot water or steam to uh, solidify in place. Uh, the geopolymer pipelining uh, is a cementitious pipeliner uh, that's sprayed uh, onto the inside of the existing pipe and is uh, then cures and hardens into a new uh, structurally sound pipe inside um, the old pipe. Um, although that technique we uh, typically only use on larger pipes because of the uh, technology that's available for it. Um, for pipe bursting, the existing pipe is broken and pushed out of the way using a kind of drill-like head uh, that also pulls a new pipe into place behind it. Um, for this project, um, like I said, as part of the storm drain rehabilitation program, we're going to be rehabilitating the existing pipe. Um, that runs along 7th Street from Lexington to Cherry, and then at Cherry Street, the pipe turns and follows 6th Street, and uh, we'll be rehabbing the pipe uh, all the way up to burn it along 6th. Uh, the existing pipe, as you can see in the picture on the left, is aging and deteriorating, uh, mostly uh, severe cracking is the most common issue uh, in this pipe. Facilitating, um, we'll be extending significantly extending the pipe's service life. Uh, um, this exhibit just shows the project limits. Um, like I already said, we're working along seven from Lexington to Cherry, and then uh, one block on Sixth Street from Cherry to Burnett. Um, HDR Incorporated provided the uh, engineering design for this project and will be assisting uh, the city with uh, construction services. Uh, PM Construction and Rehab won the uh, bid for construction on this project. Um, most of the pipe rehabilitation that they'll be doing will be using uh, CIPP, although um, I did mention a point where uh, displaced endless inlet lateral at the corner of six and burn it and uh because it's dis um to have some temporary lane closures along sixth street and seventh street um, dylan could you please repeat this the information on this slide you were break we lost you for about 15 seconds. 
Oh, okay. Okay, I'll just uh, I'll restart it from uh, from the top of it then. Um, HDR Incorporated uh, provided the engineering uh, uh, design on this project and will also be assisting the city with construction services. Um, PM Construction and Rehab won the city's bid for the construction contract. Um, most of the pipe rehabilitation they'll be doing will be done using CIPP. Although uh, they will be doing some excavation at the corner of six and burn it to repair the displaced inlet lateral that I mentioned earlier. Um, during construction, there will be temporary lane closures on six and seventh street. Um, and we're expecting to have crews start mobilizing on site uh, around February 6. Uh, the construction contract duration is 4 months. However, we're expecting to be complete. Um, by the end of April, so uh, it'll most likely be closer to three. Uh, the construction contract ended up being uh, $524,800. Um, all of the was purchased from uh, First United Methodist Church to use a portion of one of their surface parking lots as a staging area for construction equipment. Um, if anybody would like more information on the project or uh, needs to get my contact information or Mike's contact information, uh, details and updates are available at the city's project web page, which is uh, the link at the bottom of uh, this slide uh, will get you there. You can also Google um, City of Fort Worth Capital Projects and it's typically the top search result. You can go to that page and um, there's a search feature that you can search by project name. Um, as far as uh, traffic impacts with this project, the most significant will be at the intersection of 6th Street and Burnett Street for the uh, inlet lateral repair. Um, we will be closing down uh, three lanes on 6th six, uh, six Street to allow uh, for the excavation and repair of the storm drain pipe there. Um, there'll also be temporary lane closures on uh, along 7th Street to allow uh, CIPP crews to do their work. Um, the those temporary lane closures on 7th will be along the north side of the road. Um, only one only the uh, northernmost lane, which is uh, the right lane heading west on 7th will be closed. Um, there'll also be a turn lane on Henderson that's impacted and we'll be working with uh, any businesses that are affected to make sure that we accommodate them being able to access their parking lots or anything else. Uh, that may be temporary block, temporarily blocked by construction activities. Um, but uh, all the affected roads will uh, still maintain traffic flow during construction. Um, oh, actually, I guess uh, on traffic impacts, one thing we are considering is uh, doing 24 hour work for the CIPP. This would allow us to shorten the uh, duration of um, <clears throat> the CIPP installation from about a week to uh, just 24 hours. Um, however, uh, due to the city noise ordinance and the location of some apartments and townhomes uh, downtown, um, we're evaluating if we're going to be able to do that work and still uh, maintain the decibel level levels required uh, in residential areas. So we're currently working to evaluate that. And um, the contact information uh, for uh, Mike Bennett and myself, as well as uh, the city's uh, inspector on this project, Josh Manry, and the city's or uh, the contractor's um, project manager, Bailey Morrow, is uh, all available on this slide for anybody. Uh, who would like it?
Dylan, just in case somebody asked or curious, how will this project impact? What are the drainage impacts on this project? Um, we had HDR engineer on the project evaluate that and they determined that there wouldn't be any uh, impact to um, the storm drains uh, capacity with this project. It'll be uh, the same as it is today. Uh, so the we're, not trying, we're not trying to make anything better on this one, right? We're not improving, we're not making drainage improvements. We're not reducing flooding for anybody. You there? Dylan, I think we lost you again. Yeah, because they are today. Nothing, nothing will be uh, changing. But then it's the same changing. Yes. Oh. Could, could y'all re restate that, that this project is not to improve drainage or flood protection, but it is just to rehabilitate existing pipes. Can y'all hear me any better now? Yes, much better. Yes. So yeah, that's uh, like Linda and Mike were saying, we're not improving drainage conditions. We're just uh, maintaining existing conditions and um, preventing the storm drain pipe from potentially failing. And I heard you correctly that we have gotten all e you've gotten all easements that are necessary for this project. So no, no additional easements are needed. Is that correct? Yes, we only needed 1. It was a temporary construction easement that we're using as a uh, staging area. All the other, all the work will be done within uh, city right of way. Existing city right away. Those are the questions that I had. Linda, do you have any other questions? No, I think you covered them. Thanks, Mike. Josh, Manny, Bailey, do y'all have anything to add before I stop recording and end the meeting? No, I don't have anything. No. Do you have oh, sorry. Good. Go ahead. I just was going to say, I don't have anything either. Dylan, there's 4 names on here. Is there any way to, for them to know who they should contact? If they're, they see an emergency on site, who's the 1st person they should contact or maybe who's to contact if they have just overall project questions. Um, for overall project questions, um, I would be the uh, best person to reach out to. Um, Dylan, I'm Dylan Johns. Um, as far as emergencies on site, Mike, who would you direct them to? I direct them to the inspector. Reach out to the inspector. They see anything crazy? Of course, there is on the sign itself. We hit. We will have a project sign on site, and there is emergency contact information on that site for true emergencies. And that we should be able to. They should be able to reach the inspector though for just project questions that are. Happening out on out in the field. That's correct. Great. I think uh, that covers everything. I'm going to stop recording.